Yeah, now we're moving on across the pond. We're going uh, Euros. Euros just wrapped up the group stages. And, man, what a wild wild, a wild day to finish the group stages when you had uh, France playing Portugal. You had Germany playing Hungary. And the final games to settle it, you had two games going on at the same time. And the positions moved multiple times during these games with Hungary coming out, taking the lead against Germany, Germany, Germany battling back. Hungary gained the lead, and at the end, Germany tying, and then France and Portugal going on battle at the same time, where you get Portugal getting the lead, France tying it back at half, Port- uh, France gained the lead, and then Portugal getting it back on another PK. <laughs> yeah. And at the end, and earlier today as well, you had uh, Spain being the breaks off of Slovakia, mm-hmm. which actually eliminated Slovakia from even having an opportunity to making it to the round 16 and being one of the best third place teams. And that kind of threw a huge wrench into it. I mean, quickly, what were your overall thoughts of the group stages? I mean, they kind of panned out to what we thought it was. Right? I didn't see too many surprises. I mean, I, I think Netherlands probably surprised you because you, you didn't you weren't too impressed with them. But I think they they definitely like kind of showed that they should be where they're at. Um, and then Croatia just doing their thing, man. I think Croatia is we kind of said that that they were like at the end of the little like run they're gonna have. So they could be dangerous, especially in a game that's. You know, they're going to play Spain. I really don't think that they're going to fear Spain, you know, even though Spain had, a uh, you know, a good game, obviously. Um, but I really don't think they're going to, you know, fear them. So, yeah, overall thoughts, it was cool. You know, uh, um, it's, it's going well. I don't I don't think um, Copa America can compare. I, I was the one that went out there and said, hey, I like Copa America better. And the Copa America is making me look bad. We'll talk about that in the next segment. But, yeah, uh, uh, you know, so, yeah, normal to me. Normal. I would say normal. Yeah, I think – you know, all the teams that we that were needed to do well have done well. Italy done, did really well. Belgium got the results they needed as well. And now they're bringing back their players little by little from injuries and all these things. And they're finding their rhythm a bit. You, England getting the necessary results and getting the wins, even though they, they drew against Scotland, which we talked about Scotland being, you know, that that's the game they were going to be up for. And uh, earning that, you know, Croatia building little by little, even after that England game showing – you know, they might not be top tier. They're still, they're still quality. And, you know, when you have players like Luka Modric, you can, who can create something like magic in a moment, it really helps. It can elevate you and show and keep you away from the bottom. You know, Sweden winning Group E, it kind of gives me P, PTSD from the World Cup, just kind of the way they've done, they did it. With, you know what I mean? Just the, at times not pretty, and then at times it can be frustrating. It's frustrating watching, but they're – Gain the results they've gotten the results they're solid time. man sweden's solid I, it's like then you go back and you go like well i guess osorio obviously did plan it wrong and you know a 3-0 loss obviously looks bad but you know they did play you know it wasn't like we lost to some nobody sweden's they're doing their thing man they're, they're, in, the, right. they're in the quarterfinals of the world cup they yeah. won the group here you know it's interesting to me you know we talked you you mentioned uh like netherlands playing really well and they've surprised me in that regard too you know you have these teams like belgium netherlands Italy, England, who all got the results winning, uh, winning their groups as well. And for the most part, besides England, all of them got the maximum points. England drew one, but for the most part, got the points. You know, are we do we take credence in that, or do we take credence in a team like France who won one game, drew two in the group of death, but made it out and they're top of the and they still won the group, even though they haven't played the best, you know, Germany as well. You know, that group we talked about how much higher in level this group was and even hungry quality they battled all the way to the end do we yeah. going into the going to the round 16 how we how do we feel credence wise when we were talking about those teams like italy who cruised compared to these teams like france france and germany it just it seems like it's so hard to really be like all right now we're ranking everybody mm-hmm. it's hard to rank because you had one group that was absolutely battle tested and then you had some other ones how what do you feel about that well, I, I'm going to quote one of my buddies, Danny. Shout out to him. He listens to the podcast. But he says, steel sharpens steel. So these tough, these teams that you're talking about, France and Germany, that might not have shown, like, all their power yet, but they got through. Um, it shows you who they were playing with. It probably made them stronger. And that's why they're so good, because they're able to win those close games and able to squeeze by. You know, and Italy probably didn't have the comp- competition that they had, but they were killing everybody. So, you know, that, that's my comment on that. I just feel like the, these tough teams that we thought were going to do it, like France and Germany, the ones that we think are going to – England – you know, um, they're there, even though they haven't shown, like they're not blowing people out. They're there though. And that's what, that's what counts. Sometimes that's even, that's even better in the group stage than winning all your games in the group stage. So, you know, we'll see. Yeah. And Rob, before we look at the matchups first, uh, 
Let's let's uh, let's pour one out to the teams that bounced out, the six teams that bounced out. <laughs> uh, I mean, Turkey. My I'm ranking them 24th out of the 24 teams. I think a lot of people had them possibly as like sneaking in, making a nice little run, but they were terrible. They didn't show up any of their games. Absolutely atrocious. Uh, Russia, I would put even before second to worst, even before like North Macedonia, because they just kept getting worse and worse as the tournament went on. Um, and feel free to let me know if you. Uh, yeah, I feel like, you know, Scotland, that's unfair for them to be fourth in that group. Obviously, I mean, they got fourth because of the points, but they were, they did better than the teams you just mentioned. Um, and then going to, you know, keep going. Even Poland, man, was in it to the last minute. I mean, so were, you look at them like, oh, it's a fourth place team. They go home with one point. It's like, yeah, but did you watch the games? Like they weren't out of them. You know what I mean? So, uh, you know, in Hungary, we just talked about it. They, they put, you know, uh, they were on it, man. They were, they were putting their work in. Um, they were in the toughest group. We had thought they had no chance. They got out with two points. So to me, they go home with some kind of, you know, um, award or whatever. So, you know, yeah, I think, I think you're safe to say the ones you said, you know, Turkey definitely didn't get off the bus yet. Um, they haven't started the tournament yet. And then, uh, Russia and North, you know, Macedonia had, had really no chance of being there for sure. Yeah. Like you made, you made a good point about Poland, Poland with 20 minutes left or 10, 10 15 minutes. And left. yeah, they're like in the 80th minute. They were still in it. You yeah. It was two, two. And with one goal, then they yeah. jump in, then they're in it and it's a whole different story. Yep. Um, you know, and you look at something like that, where compared to Slovakia who wins their first game and then fall, fall flat the next two, you know, the building of Poland, it's, and it's such a shame if you look at somebody like Lewandowski, who's, who probably should have won the Ballon d'Oro last year if for some reason FIFA never didn't cancel it. Right. Like, don't know why didn't they canceled it because they had every other award. They just didn't have a Ballon d'Oro. He probably would should would have been the winner. That's it. That's what him, they say. You know, it's incredible how the, how, uh, how these, uh, these teams and that at the national level are that you can have such a world-class player, but from there, and even Sashevsky, the goal, their goalkeeper, and then there's such a gap for everything else and for everyone else. It's, yeah. Well, we so, talked about it, like how we have certain teams that like you think about their league, their league has no weight, you know, in the world's, you know, global stage of soccer. And then all of a sudden their countries that come to, you know, the country comes together like in Austria or these other countries come together, like Denmark, we never hear about their leagues and they're doing, you know, they do work. They have players that are just all over sprinkled all over Europe you know, that, that make them strong. And the same thing with the players though. Like we look at Sweden, how well they're doing and they still don't call their best player that we consider one of the best players in the world, right? They haven't called him in years to play for them. You know what I mean? So, you know, Ibrahimovic and other countries, you know, other teams like that. So you look at that, you're like, some of these teams can still not call the best player, one of the best players in the world and still do the thing, you know? So that was kind of crazy. Yeah. And now so <laughs> moving to the round 16. Yeah. You make a good point. And it would be interesting to see how he would have looked in this Sweden side because, um, their style of play just seems so not counterintuitive, but very opposite of the, of can, can he fit into what they want to do? Right. Cause they play so well as a team and they seem all very, as a unit, 11 people, they're very on page. And when they make it, even when they make a sub, uh -huh. it's only very on page. Is he the, is his talent with his talent over with throw a wrench in that? We don't know. Right. Uh, I think well, that, then, then, then you, then we can't feel bad when Chicharito, who's not on that level, who's not anywhere in that conversation with Ibrahimovic, you know, gets left off a gold cup team, right? Like we could just say, oh, he doesn't fit. You know, like Mexican media, we get all like, dude, our one player, let's get all our pieces. Carlos Vela, these other guys that we want on there. And Sweden could take the luxury of saying, dude, I know he's one of the best players in the world and has been for the last whatever years, but we just don't really need him. It's like, dang, okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, he doesn't fit. He doesn't fit, right? We should, yeah, he doesn't fit. Okay. No, <laughs> so going to the round 16, we got we got some tasty matchups, and you know, even looking forward past his matchups, the way the bracket like worked out, you got Belgium, Portugal, round of 16, that right there. Um, another another burner. You got England, Germany on the other side. Two. So those looks like those right off the bat look like the two matchups of the round 16. Uh, that uh that look like tops i mean you those, also, those two are gonna be nice and i also i also you know i don't want yeah that croatia spain game is gonna be nice too it's gonna be very close matchup right very close yeah very close matchup croatia was probably more veteran than spain um but you know a lot of them know each other you know uh these players know each other so i i just feel like that's gonna be a good one to watch you know it's always fun to watch modric and these guys on the you know on the field for sure and i think if you're a team like uh, I think your team like Netherlands, you like you like the way the bracket turned out because now you're looking at hey, the way we've been growing in this tournament, 
we can see ourselves in the semifinals. We play up to our potential. You got a check. You got Czechoslovakia, who's uh, kind of even and out. You got. You're going to play the winner of uh, Wales and Denmark. Uh, you know, if Denmark can make the quarterfinals, especially with everything they've gone through, that'd be such an incredible story. So you know, I think yeah. when I look at that, that's something that I like. I, w- I want that Denmark story to continue. I I see them battling Netherlands in the quarterfinal matchup. That's gonna be a good. That's a, that's a very close game. I think yeah. Denmark, you know, coming off like you said, motivated. Um, but Wells just won't go away. So now, like I said, when when Mexico tied Wells two months ago, I was very upset. But then you look at like, you know they lost one zero. It was it was a dead game. Whatever there was nothing really going on. You know Wells wasn't. You know they're not that weak. You know like that we might think traditionally. So a lot of these things are kind of panning out to be what they are. So hey, don't, hey, but don't fall asleep on Austria versus Italy. I think that could be a close one. I think like you said, Italy ran through their group. So that could not, you know, that is, that is, as a coach, you probably don't want to run through your group um, because you learn more from losing. You learn more from some ties. So, you know, when you're winning three zero and stuff like that, you think you're the best team ever. So that, that could be a close one. I don't think Austria is going to upset them, but that's going to be a good one to watch for sure. Very close. Yeah. I think, uh, I think you're right. I think that next, there'll be a level up than what Italy's been playing. And, you know, perf- it's a perfect opportunity for Italy to show that, you know, keep the momentum going for them. I think Sweden, Ukraine has PKs written all over it. I think that one might be the the weakest one of the groups. But, you know, you never know. Sweden, again, uh, if England win and Sweden win, that's a matchup of the quarterfinals in the World Cup. But, you know, you have England who, again, we talked about them, their talent rising up. Germany still hasn't clicked yet, and but they've kind of battled through. Right. You know, this this is a perfect setup for Germany where the – the culture and the mentality of the German soccer player is perfectly set up to go into Wembley and beat, uh, and beat England. Well, I think because there's going to be all this pressure for England and then for Germany, you're going to have them just so, I think they're going to feel so used to it. They're going to feel like they've done it before and they're going to have England almost right there for them to overexpose themselves. So I wouldn't be surprised if Germany wins here. I wouldn't either. Uh, I'm not really, I'm not super impressed with England either. Uh, I think they should be doing better than what they look like. So we'll see. That's going to be a good one to watch for sure. There's going to be a lot of good games coming up as they should be right. Second round. So, uh, you know, they're all, they're all like pretty tasty, probably except the Wales Denmark game and maybe except the Sweden and Ukraine, as far as like you expect, you know, action like that, but you know, should be cool to watch yeah. for me. So at least. One final thought here, you know, we've, we've watched the group stages uh, happen. We've seen these teams now play three times, you know, uh, where do you think, how do you think Mexico would do first qualifying for Euros? And then like in this setup, you know, where do you, th- how do you think they would fall? Well, right now I'm going to wrap myself in the Mexican flag, but I, I definitely do feel like, and I saw you tweet that. That was a good point. I, I do feel like um, we look, we look at our own team and we put ourselves down a lot. The fans, the media, I think we always like, Oh no, you know uh, it's, it's where we are. It's where we qualify. But I, I really do feel player for player, and you put the team on, and, and they're they're playing the hardest they can. I, I think Mexico is definitely in the second round in this tournament. I I really you cannot sit here and you know say that you know for okay for example like traditionally traditionally not all the time but traditionally you know Mexico plays Croatia and have beaten Croatia you know so you know that's a team like that they've beaten France in the past I know it's a different France I understand that you know they beat in Germany and that was a different Germany I understand that too. Um, Holanda, you know, they've gone toe to toe. We know what happens with that. It, you know, Italy, they've almost beat them, you know, so like you could ask these European teams if they were playing against Mexico, um, they would probably tell you like, or if they had to pick teams from the Western hemisphere, they would probably say, okay, Mexico could definitely compete. I think today USA would probably compete with the team they have because the players are playing in Europe. And then obviously in South America, we already know a couple of those could probably very compete, very easily compete as well. You know, the Uruguay's, you know, the Brazil is obviously the traditional teams, but Argentina. So, yeah, I, I definitely do see Mexico. They would definitely qualify. They're definitely a higher uh, level than uh, North Macedonia, than uh, Hungary. You know, I think teams like that, I really do think Mexico is better than them. I do think. Yeah, I think from what I saw, there was, there's def. we talked about too, the higher quality teams. I definitely did feel like this showed the gap between them and some of the, and the rest of Europe. Um, you know, you look at a team like Czechoslovakia, I think Mexico could fin- would have finished second above Croatia and Czechoslovakia in that group. You know what I mean? The same thing with the yeah. uh, same thing with the Holland group. I thought that was a group that three games, like in three games, Mexico maybe finishes with ho- tie, uh, tie with Holland above Holland or below yeah. Holland, something like that. But 
yeah, I think they they would compete well and they would do well in a structure like this tournament. And, and, and traditionally, we know that a Mexican team plays up to their competition, right? They 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 have time to, to study a team and get ready for them, prepare for them, especially a team that's like a higher arc, uh, you know, uh, hierarchy. You know, they're like like a Germany or whatever. Mexico can play them toe to toe, you know. So I really do feel like, and that's the reason why we complain that we're not in Copa America anymore because we know in those kind of um, Copas, except that one time, you know, we could beat these teams, you know. So I, I really don't. I know I, I definitely do feel like, you know, Mexico would be there. And, and, I, and, I, and I think that happens a lot with everything else. Like we talk about Ballon de Oro, right? Best players in the world, right? We know back in the day, Hugo Sanchez didn't win one because you had to be born in Europe to have the, uh, you know, Ballon de Oro, right? Maradona never won one either, right? And so, you know, things like that. Um, I think, you know, just because you're born in Europe does not make you a better player than a player from Mexico or a player from Colombia or a player from even from the United States, you know? So you know, it's, it's some of that, you know, European mentality. I don't know what it come, where it comes from, but we all know we hear it in the media and, and you see players, well, these players are way better. Look at the leagues they play in. I'm like, yeah, but you're comparing someone that's born in England, right? And the league they want to, the league they can play in is the EPL. So they already have a, like 10 steps ahead of a player that was born in Durango, you know, Mexico, that their best chance of going pro is in Mexico, right? So, oh yeah, well, the Mexican league's way lower. It's like, but that's the league they can play in. You know what I mean? So there's just, you know, different things based on where you are. And so, yeah, watching these Euro games, I'm like, dude, you know, that's what a World Cup is for, right? You see, you know, a team like Mexico or you see like a team like Colombia, you see a team like Peru can beat these European teams, right? They can. Yeah, absolutely. And so, you know, that's our Euro wrap. We got to bring it back, talk about Mexico like that. We got all these games are going to take place between the, uh, between our now and the next show. So yep. we'll have our quarterfinal set up for that too. So, you know. Quick, I don't know if you want to make predictions, you know. I'm, yeah, I'll run it down right now. Yeah, I'll run it down quick. Uh, so we can go wait. You want to go, you want to go game by game or what? Sure. Go game by game? Okay. Yeah, sure. So uh, Wales, Denmark, I'm going to roll with, uh, I'm going to go with Wales. I'm just going right. to, I'm going to think I'm going to go with Denmark. Denmark. Okay. We'll mark these down. So I'll come back and we'll check that. We'll see who gets better right. at this. Uh, okay. And then uh, Orlando and oh, I guess they say Países Bajos, right? Or whatever they have different names for. I haven't figured out why, which one's called Holland. I know what is uh, Holland, but uh, I know Netherlands versus Czech Republic. I think I'm going to go with Netherlands. Yeah, same as well. Okay. They, they proved me wrong. I'm, I, can, I can admit when I'm wrong. They proved me wrong. All right, cool, cool. Uh, Croatia, Spain. I'm going to roll with uh, Croatia. I'm going I'm to get on the Croatia bandwagon. I have a story to tell you about Croatia, so um, I'll tell you in a little bit, but I'm going to go with Croatia. All right, I'll go. Uh, actually, man, I think I'm going to go with – oh, man, I think I'm going to go with Spain. I don't know. Okay. I'm not confident about it, but I'm going to go with Spain. La Madre Patria. Okay, he's going with the motherland. Okay, yeah. <laughs> England, Germany, what you got? And I'm just going down the list on Wikipedia, so it's all okay. Cool. Yeah, I'm gonna go, man. Uh, I think it's, I'm gonna go with England. I think they're quite, yeah. I'm just gonna go with England. I don't want to justify it. I'll change my mind before the game starts again, but I'll go with England. Where are they playing the game at? I think it's gonna come down to. The, <laughs> I don't know that one, man, but because I don't know, it just for some reason, if they were at home, is Germany still at home or are they moving on? No, they're not gonna be at home anymore. I okay. Think, oh, man, I won't say they might be in Rome. Oh, I can click on it right. Now. I got it. Yeah. When, no, they're at Wembley, so I'm going England. They're at Wembley. All right, All right. sounds good. Okay, I'm going with the home team just because I think that's gonna be the only difference. Like them being at home is yeah. literally the only difference. Uh, Italy, Austria. Uh, yeah, give me Italy still. I want. I like what I've seen. I want them to keep. I've seen you know keep yeah. it rolling. They're looking smooth, man. I'm, I'm definitely going to pick Italy as well. And then obviously we know who you're going to go with. Uh, the Red Devils from Belgium or Portugal. Yeah, uh, Belgium. I can't be. I can't be sleeping on the streets. Yeah, he, he might get kicked out. So, um, you know, I don't know. I think that's a tough one. That's a very tough it one. Is, it is. It is. I love Lukaku, though. So I'm going to roll with Belgium, too. I'll, I'll rock with you on this one. I'm going to go with Belgium. I love Lukaku. Yeah. And All right. France. France. Sweden. I'm in France. France. Yeah. You're going France? Okay. Yeah, I don't think Switzerland would, would be able to uh, surprise them. So I'm definitely going to stick with yeah. France. For sure. And then last, uh, Sweden, Ukraine. Let me get a coin and flip it real quick because it's literally what's going to be. But I think Sweden. I think Sweden is stronger than Ukraine. I'm gonna go with Sweden. Yeah, I'm gonna go with Sweden as well. Um, you know, Ukraine showed a lot in that, in that uh, Netherlands game, mm-hmm. and then from there they kind of leveled out a little bit. I think you know Sweden. They got the. They got a. They've shown they can do it different ways now, right? They uh, they got three goals today. They got that zero zero result against Spain. They've done it in different ways, even though they still kind of have that same style where they're coming, where they're gonna. Their blocks are going to be very difficult to beat. Yeah. Their defensive structure is really sound. And, you know, they're going to frustrate. And I think it's a, kind of like a perfect game for them to kind of beat Ukraine, where Ukraine's not going to offer a lot offensively. And so they might even still be able to 
attack more while still holding their defensive structure without exposing themselves a lot. So I'm going to go with Sweden. Me too. I think Sweden has just been looking – they look crisp, man. They look crisp, and uh, they could do something in the next round too. So I'm, I'm going to stick with Sweden. Yeah, cool, definitely. Yeah, no. Right. So that's our European talk. We're going to take a quick break, and then we're going to head down to Brazil to talk about Copa America. And uh, <laughs> then we're going to have – oh, yeah, I think our thoughts are going to be great opposite of what they are about uh, Euros. For sure. <laughs> 